Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This is the last presentation about aggregate demand and aggregate supply in an economy. In the previous two presentations, AD and AS have been explained. We know already why aggregate demand and aggregate supply have specific curves indicating the, their correlation with aggregate price level. We also learned how AD and AS curves are derived as well as how they are affected by specific factors. In this presentation, we will see the short-run fluctuation in the economy. The source of fluctuation is clear. It may come from aggregate demand, AD, aggregate supply, AS, or both AD and AS. Because of the shift in AD, AS, or both curves, equilibrium price and output will change in the short run, the short run or deviate from its long-run equilibrium. Whenever output and price deviate from their long-run equilibrium level, there will be automatic adjustment from SRAS to get the output back to the long-run equilibrium level. But during the adjustment process, that we don't know exactly how long it will take, economy may experience recession, inflation, or both. Suppose now the first change happens, that is, when AD is shifting to the left, the shifting may be due to policy or certain event. The U.S. Great Depression and the U.S. financial crisis in 2008 are examples of how AD had shifted to, to the left. Look at this diagram to analyze what happens. We have AD, SR, SRAS, and LRAS. And we assume the initial condition is in the long run equilibrium at A, when Y1 equals to Y bar and P1 is a PE or expected price. So when AD is shifting to the left, there will be movement along the SRAS curve. At point B, price is lower than expected or P2 is lower than PE. Thus increasing real wage according to sticky wage theory and or lowering sales according to the sticky price theory. Both result in lower demand for labor from firms or more unemployment and firms will produce less output or less Y at Y2. So in the short run, we have new equilibrium price at P2 and new equilibrium output at Y2. There will be adjustment, however, if policymakers do nothing. Labor and firms will eventually realize that the overall price is actually lower. Thus, they adjust their expected price level. Labor will lower their nominal wage demand, providing firms the reason to hire more labor and produce more output. It means the shift of SRAS curve to the right because at any given price now, output level supplied by firms is higher. Interpret it differently using the sticky price theory, adjusting expected price level means reducing it to the actual level. As a result, at any level of, out of, out of output, price level is now lower. It is also the shift of SRAS curve to the right or downward. Because, the, because of the SRAS shift, in the long run, lower price is also responded by the AD. There will be movement along the AD curve in which CI and, X, and, and X increase returning aggregate output to its uh, natural level at Y1 equals to Y bar. And at the new equilibrium at point C, the overall price level is at P3. But at P3, now actual price is already equal to the expected price or PT now equals to PE prime. Instead of um, achieving new long-run equilibrium at, uh, at uh, point C, policymakers may actually induce the economy to mitigate the severity of the economic fluctuations. Certain fiscal or monetary policy may shift the aggregate demand curve back from 82 to 81, leaving the long-run equilibrium unchanged at point A. But of course, to do so, they need uh, sufficient speed and precision to really offset the initial shift of AD to AD2. Lastly, we have the condition when instead SRAS that shift to the left. 
Similar to AD, the change may be due to may be due to a certain policy or event that affects one or more non-price factors of SRAS. Okay, we begin with the initial condition. The long-run equilibrium is here at A when y1 is equals to y bar and p1 is uh, PE. When SRAS, SRAS curve is shifting to the left, it pushes the price level high to P2, leading to a movement along the AD curve. With higher price level, AD will be lower, thus lower the aggregate level of output to Y2. P2 and Y2 at point B are the short-run equilibrium. The condition is called stagflation because higher price or inflation occurs along with higher unemployment resulting from lower level of output. However, just like in the previous case, the story doesn't stop here. There will be adjustment in the economy again toward achieving the long-run equilibrium conditions. Realizing that actual price P is now higher, the expected price or PE will be set higher too by both labor and firms following the actual price. Labor will be demanding higher nominal wage because their real wage has declined, but it then results in higher unemployment because of lower demand for, for labor. At the same time, firms that have adjusted the price level of their output, making at any level of output, overall price level in the economy is now higher. Both conditions cause uh, SRAS curve shift further to the left or upward making the stagflation condition even worse. This phenomenon is called wage price spiral. Higher price leading to higher wages and in turn leading to even higher price. Uh, the wage price spiral, uh, spiral, however, will eventually slow down and reverse, although we don't know how long we have to wait until the reverse process occurs. Um, the reverse process occurs because higher and higher unemployment rate makes labor realize that their bargaining position for higher nominal wage is getting lower and lower. In fact, what the labor currently needs more is uh, what what the labor currently needs more is a job, not an increased wage. With lower nominal wage demand, now producing more for the firms is more profitable. Therefore, at any given price, output of all firms in the economy is now higher. In other words, SRAS curve is shifting back to the right. Unfortunately, the reverse process in reality almost could never materialize. People can wait. Policymakers cannot let their people suffer too long. Their, actions in, their action in response to these stagflation conditions is usually to shift AD to, to the right to return output to its natural level immediately. As we can observe from the figure, such act could effectively return the output level and the employment, but what is hard to avoid is the further increase of the price level. The increase of price level is also now permanent at P3. Okay, uh, that's all from me now. Hope you understand all the aggregate demand and aggregate supply mechanism as well as their interaction that might result in short-run fluctuation in an economy. So see you in the next presentation and the different topic of basic macroeconomics. Thank you for your attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.